Um, so let's get started for today. Thank you everyone for coming into the live streams. I now live stream on YouTube and I live stream on Twitch. I live stream through Restream.com, which allows me to split stream both of, to both channels. Um, so either or, whichever works for you, whichever you frequent the most. But today I wanted to um, uh, take a look at this piece, talk about lighting, talk about composition and using the right references. But before I get started, there's a couple of announcements. Right now, Portrait Studio is on sale. Um, and my master class is on sale. Both are uh, really, really low right now. Um, but that's the biggest news right now is that Portrait Studio, which I'll use today, and my master class are both on sale. Um, so let's get right into it. What is my problem with this piece? What problems do I have? Let's talk about them. So the first issue with it is that the lighting on her character doesn't really match the lighting in the room. Um, so we've got some really strong lighting coming in from here. Okay, and um, from here and from here. And there's no nose shadow. There are no real shadows on the chest. There's no real shadow along the cylinder of the arm. Um, there are some interesting shadows here. The crop cuts right along, so this is a pinup technically, the crop cuts right along her face. I mean, uh, her half body and then her face, it, it's lit up awkwardly in that we can see the eyes. We can see one of the eyes, but both eyes are glowing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually extend the body so we see a little bit of her leaning against the wall. We're going to see something like that with the head over there. And the shadow, her whole head is going to be shadowed, or part of her whole head, maybe just leaving her mouth visible, is going to be shadowed. Um, and uh, uh, the cast shadow will then allow the two eyes to glow the way they're supposed to. And then more of the clothing that they're, that they're, that they're modeling is visible. So that's a fundamental, is that don't allow the model's figure to obstruct the model's costume or, or design. So that, that the pose shouldn't obstruct the design, write that back to me. So right now you've got a lot of things obstructing the design. Um, and then we've got a strange little narrative addition right here, which is your your arm, the hand that she's, she's I don't know, I think it's an injury, but the hand that is on this injury um, seems to be a little bit awkward, very strangely sized, um, and isn't, isn't contoured to the body. It is, the hand doesn't seem like it's making contact with the body. So this is a lot of stuff to fix. So before I start fixing anything, I start lassoing. Um, and so let me lasso a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to separate the background and the foreground. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the background. So let me turn this layer off, just so we, we can keep relying on the background to work properly. And then I'm going to actually get into Portrait Studio and show you guys how it works for those who don't have it. Almost everybody has it now. But for those who don't have it, um, basically it is a reference engine. It makes, it makes it easy to build your reference. You don't have to go into Google looking for the perfect light reference, the perfect figure reference, etc. And then it allows you to customize the model, the light, and the camera. So let's create the same girl but on Portrait Studio. So I already loaded up the mannequin and remember if you want this it's available on my site for um, almost half off at the moment. So let's create the same pose. So what I'm going to do because she's leaning over I'm going to lean her over as well meaning that her torso is doing a lot of leaning but her upper body is compensating because one of the legs has caused that lean and the other leg is also compensating. So now we have this really interesting lean to her body and it's making everything feel a little bit more feminine because it's revealing her torso, it's revealing her body type. And I'm going to tilt her this way so that we can see this tilt, but she's also leaning up against a wall so I'm tilting the axis 
as well so I can lean her against that wall okay and then we're gonna adjust the arms and remember the whole thing with the arms is that we want them not to feel like they're just hugging the torso we want a really interesting space that reveals the feminine figure beneath it again her oh, she's just playing with her nails so I didn't bother posing that since it's already posed and all I want really is these shadows right here these really important shadows I talked about earlier so what I want to do is tilt the face up even higher meaning that I'm gonna expand the axis make it even more of a this tilt do you see what I'm saying obviously that's too much but before after her head is tilted down more her ears are lower her eyes are lower I'm also going to give her eyebrow an expression she just hunted she's very proud of herself this is her glamour shot I'm gonna get the skin shadow color and I'm gonna apply it to all of those places that I feel like could use a bit of shadow but I'm also going to apply it on half her face take a look at what happened to her face when we added that shadow so confidently on half her face it just really it like evolved the whole portrait to another level right so the whole palm should be in light half the breast should be in shadow so we've got the breast itself and the shadow of the breast which i'm going to do in one go then i'm going to cast her shadow her shadow is a pretty important one and i'm going to lean her back i'm going to take her up there and i'm just going to keep applying that curvature to the body maybe one of the legs actually is going that way so before see how she was very stiff shoulders in and a little bit of extra reference and we get so much we get a whole new character a whole new world of character so now what i'm going to do is color correct so her hair is purple but it doesn't have to be flat purple it can be a reddish purple meaning that it can be a purple that's neighboring on red a little bit more because right now it's purple color is pretty far away from red it's nowhere near red we want it closer to red why because the color wash every painting has a color wash what's a color wash a color wash is the harmony of all the colors together in the painting so this reddish purple I'm putting it on the hair I'm also going to put it on the dress because I want all of the colors to read like they're from the same temperature and they're from the same world. She is still wearing a red dress. Her hair is still purple. But something about the environment now has a bit more harmony and that's color wash. I'm also going to add a shadow on the upper half of the canvas, kind of a purpley shadow darkness color, just to continue the feeling that this is a dark scene. Let's keep it on darken. So now is the interesting part. Now we can pick another color. Um, and this could be that neon purple color that's going to wake up the other half of the scene. But there's so much stuff you could do with this. Um, you could keep the eyes on that yellow and then make the secondary light. Where are you? Make that the blue light. Oh, the green is just fabulous. It's so Halloween-y. Oh, never mind, the blue. I mean, this is the blue. It looks really, really interesting. God damn, there's so many. There's so many to pick from. <laughs> but that green really pops, right? That green is just phenomenal. So I'm just gonna keep that. One more reminder, this is nighttime scene. We don't wanna use any warm universal lights because it's a vampire. It's not gonna make any sense. So if you wanted to, you could use like neon lights. Obviously this is too much, but something like a neon light that explains why we can even see her at all. And that would be the neon color this way. Because when you're standing beside a neon light, you do only have that one color happening on the piece. And this is the other half of the canvas, which is that Star Wars effect. The Star Wars effect is when you have blue and red, or blue and green versus each other on the canvas. Let me show you. Um, you're just, it's gonna just instantly read Star Wars for a second, right? Star Wars, <laughs> ignore the green patch. 
You see what I'm saying? That's how. That's what happens when you have a lightsaber. That's the only light source in the room, but that lightsaber has a color. So when you have a neon light or artificial light or any light, even this, even if the sun was more bluish or more reddish, everything would be more bluish and more reddish. Because that's what it's like when you have a light source. The light source decides all the colors, because the light source becomes a filter through which we see all the colors. So again, if you want your stuff critiqued, all you have to do is go to istabrak.com and uh, click on the community tab. And uh, you, that shall take you to the uh, uh, Discord link. And there you can submit your work. This was picked up off the Discord. Or you can go here, top right corner is my subreddit. And uh, that will take you to the subreddit where you can also post your work to get critiqued. Um, I actually wanted to do a three-quarter view critique hour today for 14-day uh, challengers, but I don't see a lot of 14-day challengers that are trying three-quarter view. Remember that three-quarter view is really, really important to study in portraits as much as front view. It helps complete the missing parts of front view. And um, Portrait Studio is on sale. So my website, again, just go to the store. The thing I used today for building this reference was Portrait Studio. And you saw how powerful it is to have a powerful referencing system, to a reliable referencing system. So go to my store to find that, and also my master class for portraits is also on sale. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I always forget to ask for that. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next class, uh, Tuesday, the 18th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye, guys.